What's up guys, this is Crypto with James talking to you today about Threshold. Threshold is one that's gone under the radar quite a lot. Um, and it's the creation um, after the merger of a new Cypher and um, Keep. Um, and I think this is a really interesting one that's probably quite undervalued right now. Um, and I want to effectively run down what they're actually doing and why I think this has a shot to do a pretty substantial gain by the next bull cycle. Um, yeah, so pay attention. Before I get into that though, I update the spreadsheet. Now, if you're brand new to this channel, you will be wondering what the hell this spreadsheet is. So these are the first 26 coins that I spoke about <clears throat> when I made this channel. First 26 coins I held when I made this channel. And had you put in a hundred bucks into each of these when I released videos about them and you were still holding all those cryptos, you'd never sold them, you'd ignored them, you'd never really watched the markets, done everything wrong, you'd still be in profit for around 8.8k doing absolutely everything wrong. But if you'd done the right thing, if you'd have sold these coins last year when the markets were flying, remember buy low, sell high. If you'd have sold them when they were flying last year, you could have made 123k. Massive difference. Now, obviously, I sold these off. These are not what I own anymore. If you want to see the coins that I own, you can go go read copymycrypto.com. On that site, I share my entire portfolio. I share every coin I buy and every coin I sell. We have uh, tutorials for anyone because we've got so many members and so many of them have never invested in anything. So these tutorials run everyone through how they can get started. Uh, they're the same ones I'd send to my family when they ask for help. Um, and guys, I deep dive these markets every day, every damn day. I'm always looking for cryptos that I think can do massive gains uh, that I add to my portfolio. It takes the work out of it for you because you can literally see exactly what I'm doing and copy along. You know, you'll notice Phantom did 677 times gain. I'm always looking for the next Phantom when I find it. And of course I will. I'm going to get onto the site and tell the members I'm not going to create some Udemy course like last time. Or be blabbing around on YouTube. I'm just going to get on and tell the members. So if you want to get in on the next big crypto um, before everyone else and make those massive gains, then go read the site, guys. The link's in the description. So, Threshold. Now, Threshold's the brainchild of uh, uh, the merger between Keep Network and New Cypher. So this is the product that they created after the protocol merger. Remember that Keep Network, New Cypher uh, merger is the biggest the first and biggest and enormous merger, um, biggest one in crypto history. Um, so T token is the a utility token for the threshold network and the governance token for threshold DAO. And the T token is used primarily to stake a node. So node operators receive fees from various applications that rely on threshold networks, uh, cryptographic primitives. All that means is basically that they um, the threshold has built uh, effectively a suite that provides um, built cryptographic building blocks for privacy and for cross-chain bridges. Um, and a lot of the DeFi protocols in particular will want to end up using threshold because it's well positioned in terms of um, what they're offering compared to some of the infrastructure that's currently in place. Um, Binance Academy actually released a whole thing on what Threshold Network is. So Threshold empowers user sovereignty by delivering a suite of Threshold cryptographic services for Web3 apps. The whole premise is basically to ensure that um, we no longer have like one singular bad actor or one massive um, holder of tokens that can Im influence DAOs, that can that can manipulate uh, protocols. So uh, Threshold, as I said, was designed by, uh, was created from the merger of new Cypher and Keep Networks. Um, and the services on Threshold uh, right now include a proxy re-encryption service for um, user-controlled man secret management. And uh, they have Threshold Bitcoin, which is version two, as well as the centralized uh, and permissionless Bitcoin to Ethereum bridge. 
So again, you really useful tools because we need we need multiple different versions of, within Bitcoin, so the Bitcoin can be moved across different chains. Um, they're completely community driven. They're governed by the DAO. The DAO has a three pronged system, which is based on Compounds, uh, Governor Bravo, um, and it comprises the token holder DAO, the staker DAO, and an elected council. What that means is again. No one person will end up being in a position where they can effectively influence and move uh, decision making based on the amount of holdings that they have. Um, so Threshold's got a, a pretty damn good uh, setup in place for multiple different DeFi protocols to start using it. Um, and I'm, I'm quite intrigued to see how this gets on because fundamentally it has massively gone under the radar when you put into context how popular new cipher were how popular keeper network keep network sorry was um you know only fourteen thousand people are paying attention to um threshold right now uh which is surprising given everything that they are looking to do which is effectively empower user sovereignty uh via privacy now the issue that they could have is obviously the privacy elements. Anything to do with privacy right now, I do think has an issue because governments need, always want to see exactly what you have. And privacy, I think, is gonna be, like privacy cryptos are gonna have issues down the line. They're gonna be delisted from exchanges. I think there's gonna be real problems. Um, and threshold, could be in a situation where it has a problem as a result of, <coughs> excuse me, as a as a result of the sort of push against uh, privacy points. Um, it's a really interesting one. It's a really interesting one. There's a couple other concerns. One of them is the way the volume is for something with a market cap as large as it has, and generally the volume has been pretty low. We're looking at like the low three. Well, the low millions, you know, a couple of days where it had some nice big volumes, but generally the volume's pretty damn low for a coin that supposedly has a market cap of 200 million. Um, that to me is a is an of concern, um, along with the privacy element of this, because privacy is always a big issue and it's going to continue to be a big issue uh, as crypto grows. So I would be concerned about that. But what I'm intrigued to see is how fast they can grow this ecosystem. That's going to be their biggest job because they've got to get and they've got to up onboard as many different DeFi protocols as possible that want to use their cryptographic uh, tech. If they can, this can do very, very well. This can do very, very well. Um, you know, they're going to be, again, they've got that big push on uh, data because of the proxy re-encryption uh, re service. So the data owner can then revoke access to data for as many entities as it wants. Um, data is always money, so you can never, ever ignore that. <laughs> um, and there's pretty damn good stake in returns on this, you know. So I... I'm, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued, but I do think they've got a lot of hurdles to, to, to resolve. And for me, they are quite simply, the privacy element is gonna be an issue down the line. The volume right now looks odd. It doesn't match up with the overall market cap to me. Um, and they need to onboard uh, a lot of DeFi. They need to onboard a lot of projects, if they can onboard a lot of projects combined with every, uh, combined with not having an issue with privacy down the line, uh, they can do very, very well. They can do very, very well. But right now, it wouldn't be one I would touch unless um, their ecosystem, the world of sort of threshold, starts to grow. Um, because if it stays as is, I don't see the growth. It has to do those things to grow. Um, it's an interesting one, but the volume is of, of concern to me.
And again, the privacy element is of massive concern because I think we're going to see a flurry of delistings of uh, privacy coins in the in the future. So it would be something that I would keep away from until we find out where governments stand on privacy coins, which I can tell you where they stand, they don't like them. Um, but, but are they going to force delisting? That's a different question. Anyway, um, if you guys, uh, well, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. What do you think of threshold? Do you think it can run up higher than what I'm suggesting, which is about 25 cents, which I think it could do, put it in market cap of a couple billion? But that would require, again, that would require all those um, things to happen. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you are a returning viewer, subscribe to the channel. I want to get the returning viewers all subscribed. 100% of you subscribed. So come on, let's get that done, guys. Um, and if you want to see the coins I own right now, go read copymycrypto.com. On that site, I share my entire portfolio. I share every coin I buy. I share every coin I sell. I have beginners, step-by-step -step tutorials. Anyone can use them. It goes through how to get started in crypto. Um, and I deep dive these markets every day. I've been doing it for years and years and years and years. I pick big winners, as you can see from Phantom. And when I find the next Phantom, I'm not going to do a Udemy course or any nonsense like that. I'll be spouting around about it on Twitter or YouTube. I'm just going to get onto the site and tell the members what the next big gainer is in my eyes and why I'm getting in on it. If you want to get in on the next big gainer, go read the site, guys. The link's in the description. And uh, let's see how these midterm elections play out. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.